Just be 100% honest, Mom. This is good for, for you and me. Because you've never talked about this with anybody. Yeah. We got this. Okay. We've talked before that we had a major falling out when I was about 16 till I was 24. I've never actually talked about that incident with my mom since then. We're talking for the first time mm -hmm. of how that affected us and we hope that this can help you connect more with your mom, grow better and closer with your family and help you heal however you need to inside. Coming from an Asian culture, specifically Vietnamese Chinese, in that culture, we don't usually have therapeutic conversations. We don't talk out our problems. We don't usually have family meetings where we say, hey guys, I'm hurt, I'm sad. There are problems, but most of the time, you just keep it to yourself, right? right. And is that how you guys grew up too, mom? Mm -hmm. Embarrassed to say it. Even though mom and I grew up in a culture where you hide your problems and you keep it to yourself, you tried to teach me to be proud of who you are, to speak up. Don't let somebody else silence your voice. I grew up with an Americanized way of thinking, but with my mom who still had traditional ways, there still is a learning curve to connect the two. I believe that confidence within your family is one of the most important fundamental roots to have. The confidence to be honest, to be open with your family members. We stay true to what we say we're gonna do because we want not only us to be a family here, but for you guys to be a family with us. I wanna thank you, first of all, for caring about me and Mama Mai to ask thoughtful questions about our relationship and to get us to maybe face some of those uncomfortable moments we haven't talked about, like this one. How do you feel right now, by the way? A little bit nervous. Yeah, I'm nervous too. So we are facing our fears right now and we hope that this encourages anybody out there to face your fears by sitting down on a couch together, even if it's as ugly as this one. <laughs> to actually close the gap and remembering that unconditional love means you should be able to talk about anything. Growing up, Mama Mai and I were very close. Mm -hmm. I honestly think I am a television host and an entertainer today because of Mama Mai. She taught me how to shine, you taught me how to talk to people, relate to people, mm -hmm. taught me how to do my makeup, how to put on my clothes and wear bright colors. When my second brother was born, there were three kids in the house now, Mama Mai had to take on a second job, so she became very busy. We needed to find a babysitter. So we called upon a family member. This family member came over every single day and stayed with me after school and became a really cool, iconic person in my life. This person was about 16, 17, and I was nine. I remember dyeing my hair black because of this person, listening to The Cure. If you can imagine like being about nine years old at that time, you're just super impressionable and everything cool from skateboarding. Mama, my, you're... My phone, my phone. Really? Yeah, I, I told somebody to turn it up. Why did you Mom. turn it on? You turn it off, Mom. I did. I did, but I don't know what happened. Here, up here. I do already. I don't Just... know why. Move. Okay, done. Done. I'm pouring out my f***ing heart here. Does she understand this? I did for the whole day. Did you hear anything the whole day? Only now. Just put me up. <sighs> anyway. Like I was saying, I really looked up to this family member who was babysitting me. We became very close. And I just remember one day, this person sitting really close to me. We were playing video games and he started to touch my thigh. And I just remember the whole time I, I, I keep thinking, this is my family member. I know him like this. I've known him for this long. He's taught me this. Um, he's allowed in my house. This is cool, this is okay. And I also was just stunned because I've never been intimately touched like that. So I couldn't tell if it was wrong. I just knew I was noticing it. I was almost narrating it in my head, but I also just kept playing the video games. Every day, the touching continued a little bit more. Him taking off some of my clothes. We used to have the bathroom in your room. I remember him pulling me into that shower and it was the first time I've ever seen a grown man and what he looked like. I was still nine years old. I remember him telling me to touch him in certain ways. When I picture it, I just see flashes of things. I remember seeing the color of my clothes. I remember seeing blue jeans and then my blue um, underwear, my green shirt that my mom bought for me. And this happened every day for a few weeks and then it turned into months and I remember one year going by. 
I didn't want to say anything because I was afraid. Honestly, because I knew you and dad were struggling with money and I knew that we had to have a babysitter. So I was afraid of getting him in trouble because then who would watch over us? And you were always really tired because you had two jobs and you were stressed out. And I never thought to come and bring more issues to you. He said certain things that made me afraid of making you angry at me. He would say things like, which is like, my, your mom's gonna hit you if you talk about the family. Or, which is like, nobody's gonna believe you. People think little girls like you are crazy. I would just come home and go to my room and I just kind of knew that he would come in at some point and there was nowhere in my house to run to. This went on for a long time, for a few years. I'm a teenager, I'm like 13, 14. And I remember getting quieter and I started getting nightmares. I felt like you and I grew farther from each other because mm -hmm. you were working so much. I approached my mom and I tried to tell you what had happened. You were in the kitchen, you were cooking something. And I remember telling her, almost like pleading with her, like, I don't like this person. Um, I, I don't want to stay at home with him anymore. Please stay home with me. I remember you were confused. I think you thought we were fighting, like kids fighting, right? That's what I thought. Do you remember this moment? Yeah, I thought you guys fighting all the time. You said you don't like him, you don't like him. So I thought you fight, that's it. So I remember the words I was saying was trying to get my mom to just get him to leave, but I also wasn't able to say it clearly because I don't even know what, what, what that word is in Vietnamese, that someone's touching you, like, you know what I mean? It's just so weird. So she didn't get it and she just said, you guys don't like each other right now, just, you know, um, ignore each other for now. I kind of went back to my own corner and he was starting to become more aggressive with what he was doing to me in private. So, um, so I went to my mom and I said um, that this person was, was, uh, was doing things to me that, that gave me nightmares. You, you just, you looked really confused. I don't realize what you're trying to say. I told you that he took off my clothes. Yeah, and then I don't believe it. That's my reaction, I don't believe it all because his parent is divorced. So my father bring him to, to our house and then he was baby, you know. One year old, we bring him and stay with us. He's just like a, the real son. He talked to me, he respect me, he very sweet, he really nice. Whatever, I ask for help. He gonna do it, he gonna do everything. So when you tell me, you know, I feel like, a, is that right? I, I, I don't it believe it. It didn't match up. It doesn't match up, I, I don't believe it. And I, I just let it go. I began to get angry because now I'm telling my mom that he's taking off my clothes. And you said, I don't believe you. I should come ask him, you know, I should get action to ask him. But I don't know why, that time I feel like, uh, maybe I can say I'm stupid uh, or I don't pay attention. I don't no, know, you're not but I feel, stupid, like, Mom. I feel like I don't believe it. When I don't believe it, I just let it go, you know. I never think he's gonna do that. I never, because he, I think I love him very much. You know? But did you love him more than your daughter who was trying to tell you something? I love him more than I love you because at that time I'm thinking he have no parent and he came over here. I bring him to my house. I feel like I rescue him. I love him. At least you have father, you have mother, you know, but him, he have nobody. You're saying that just because he didn't have parents, you felt so bad for him that you chose to believe him over your own daughter. It's not I chose, but I feel like you guys always fight on the time, you know what I mean? Mom, I don't like my cousin, you know, I like that, so, you know, and then this is the point, this is, I got tricked because I don't see anything bad thing about him. He's part of the blood of the family. I don't think he do that. So in that moment, I was about 15, I remember distinctly those words, I don't believe you, he wouldn't do that, that's your cousin, this is in your head. I felt by myself. I even got to a point where I started to ask myself, did I imagine these things? I knew that it wasn't just in my head. And that's when I started to separate from you, mom, and I decided at 16, I ran away from home. So I packed up my things and I left the house and I moved to San Francisco. I left the house and started to pursue my career in makeup, in styling, and later TV, and pretty much have been independent since 16. I spent nine years, almost 10 years, never celebrating Mother's Day, never celebrating Christmases with my family. All of the traditions we always did, it stopped completely. My mom was mad at me for running away 
because she felt that that was disrespectful. And I hated you at the time because- At that time, I feel like, you want to run away? You want to learn heart rate? Go ahead, run. I don't need that kind of daughter. That's how I feel. For anybody out there who has distance from your family member or maybe even a broken connection with your mom, you feel it. So at that time, my mom was doing her own thing and I had to find a way to reconnect with her, but I hadn't talked to her in years. I finally got to contacting where you were at that moment and I came over and I remember I knocked on the door and as soon as the door opened, we went at it. The ugly cry, the ugly scream, the scene from Love and Hip Hop, like everything you could think of. And I said it one more time, you never believed me when I needed you to. You listened and you said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? And I said, I told you about this. I told you that this person, this family member has been touching me and has been doing things to me every single day for years. And you never helped me. All of a sudden you stopped and you said, tell me exactly what he did. And I told you mm. everything. I don't know why I really listened to her single detail, detail, everything. And I'm really shocked because I cannot believe it. It's not, this is a real thing. It's happened to my family, make me, um, guilty and make me feel so bad and make me cannot sleep and I want to come over to his house. I want to punch him. I want to put him in jail. You know what I mean? I cannot believe it. That's happened to my daughter. And then she ran away because of that reason, because I don't believe her. I have to say, I'm really sorry, Kong. I'm really sorry because uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know why I, I love that boy and I take care like a real son and then do that to you. I cannot believe it. That's what, I guess that's, Mom, I, I obviously forgive you now because you're like my best friend, of course, and I'm so happy that we reconnected. But I'll, I'll never forget why, why you didn't believe me. And even like right now when you say that you loved him more than me because you felt bad for him, I just don't understand. That's how I feel. I feel sorry for him, you know. I don't know what to do, but uh, the only thing I can say, I'm really sorry. After that, I cannot sleep. For the whole night, I cannot sleep. In the morning, I came over to his house. I, I asked him. Whose face, house? Um, what is it? Him. You the, went to his house? Yes, I came to his house. I asked him. I said, why did you do that to my daughter? What did you do? Can you tell me what's going on? He's shocked. And then he said, I didn't do anything. Who told you? I said, my daughter told me. You better tell me right now before I call the police. You went? To his house later on? Yes, I went to his house later when on. You, when I told you what happened, you mean as an adult? Yes, I almost hit him. How come you never told me this? No, because I'm so mad. Because I, I'm, I'm so mad, I just do without you. And I came over and I almost slapped him and, and he begged me. He begged me, please don't say anything, please don't say anything. He told me, forgive him. He's too young, he doesn't know what he's doing. And then he know he's stupid. And he say, would you please tell Ginny, can I buy the present for her? Oh my God. No, no, that's why he asked me, can I buy the present for her? So I can talk, I can apologize. I tried to tell him, my daughter hates the people like that. And then she write a book, she's talking about you. And I cannot stop my daughter because, you know, I feel bad, I feel embarrassed. What did I, I do to her? How come I don't, on her side, I'll be on your side? Right now, if I can kill you, you know, you're the first one on my list. I told him like that. I wish you t told me that you went to his house because... So what are you going to do? I don't want... I know, but you never told me that before. And that part is all I needed. That, that part is all I needed to know is that you supported me and you defended me. Like, I... How come you never told me that that... That right there is all I needed to know is that you believe me. That you believe me and that you listen and that you would go and try to do something about it. Like, I just needed your support. Does that make sense? It I, makes sense. It makes me, I know that I'm crying right now, but actually, I feel like you just set something free inside of me because you believed me enough to go to his house and say something to him. Yeah. That's all I needed to see, Mom. You never told me this for years. No, the reason I didn't tell you because I don't want you to think back again. It's already over. Let me take care of him. I know I should tell you, but I feel like if I bring it back to you, make you more, more uh, hurt. And I don't want to yes. say that's why I let it go. No, I, I understand you now, Mom, but you have to realize what he did to me, that hurt. But my own mother 
not believing me, that hurts more. So, I'm, really, I'm really sorry. I'm, I know, it's my fault. I'm, my no, fault. I'm sorry. But I'm like, I, I tell you, he covers, he, he cheated and he covers so much. No, I know, I know. But mom, I'm just saying that I'm so happy right now. I know I'm crying, but I'm so happy because all I needed to know is that you are behind me, you support me, and that you believe me. This is all I needed my entire life. My mom knows her daughter, and when her daughter says she's not okay, you will be there for me and fight for me. That's all I needed to feel. I've healed from him, and honestly, you never totally heal from it. You, it's just something you go through for the rest of your life. But I don't even care about him anymore. This is what I care about. You and me, nothing can ever come between us. No stranger, no family member, no lie. You and I are a team first before anybody else. I'm really sorry, Kong, but you have to think at that time, I'm still young. I, 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 you are the first one in my family and then I, I, I don't know that much about to be a parent too. Mom, right now, just what you showed me makes you the best mom in the world. At that time, I don't know, I'm too young. That's why I told you I got you by accident. I don't want you to come out. I told you already. I why are to, we bringing that I want, up? I want to enjoy to have a good time and you come out and then, then I take care of the baby. I'm not perfect as a parent too at that time. Why? Honest. Why are you bringing it up that I'm in an accident? <laughs> what kind of <laughs> up is that? Oh my God. No, it's true. I don't want you to come anyway, out. that's not making me feel any better. Speak out because oh it's, it's not because I want to be famous. It's not, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Go what, on, I'm what, sorry. What, 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 that's, a, that's a cheap glue, huh? 99 cent store, whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh we're making Japan, Daiso. <laughs> whatever. Don't throw it away, it's still good. I use Mom, it. stop! I feel so crazy right now. I've got one lash on. Okay, let's just keep this 100. Am I really that much of an accident still? I love you. I told you you're still an accident, I don't know why. <laughs> you're an ass. <laughs>